Wings talks about Blue, a redhead fairy with serious anger management issues. After her mom grounded her for not being popular enough at school, she got super pissed and tried to burn her alive. I guess getting hot and bothered comes with the territory when you're a fire fairy. No need for heated arguments, the heat comes from within. But even this was a bit too much for Bloom, who was like, whoopsies, I better start sleeping at stables. Luckily though, some old woman called Farah found our poor ginger nut and pulled the you're a wizard Harry card on her and took her to Alfia, a magical school for teenage fairies and some fire dudes called specialists. This Alfia is located in a place as earthlings aren't aware of. The other word. I don't know what kind of sloth came up with that, but how lazy must you be to name a whole mystical word the other word? Even a handful of 11-year-olds are more creative. Once she reaches this other word, she notices that somehow everyone's British. And none of these 21st century fairies have wings. Maybe the special effects team is lazy as well. Over there, she meets a bunch of girls with a bunch of superpowers. On a scale of a little bit annoying to unbearably irritating, there's Musa, the human emotions vacuum. Stella, the human lamp. And then there's Aisha, the human balloon fight. Saving the worst for last, I introduce you to Tara, the walk in human garden. She's a thirsty crybaby with entitlement issues and a boy obsession. Too bad the Sierra Burgers did not get the guy at the end. But I do know someone that might. On her first day, Bloom catches the eye of Sky, the fairy version of a high school jock and the two instantly fall for each other. However, this moron swimming in water is so dangerous, they make the Bermuda Triangle look like a kiddie pool. In fact, Sky's ex Stella, who's a little goddamn princess, takes the crazy ex-girlfriend trope to a whole new level. She even blinded her ex-best friend out of jealousy. Believing young girls with agonizing lifelong disabilities no longer satisfies her ego, so she moved straight to attempted murder. Seeing how vulnerable and fragile Bloom is, Stella convinces her to pay a visit to her parents, even though there are demon monsters out there desperate for fairy flesh, a fact that she may or may not have admitted on purpose. I guess the devil is in the details, and she did all of this for a blondie that looks like he could be her twin brother. I don't know in which part of the other world they are, but it must be the closest thing to Fairy Alabama. Too bad Bloom has a lot more to worry about besides a self-indulgent Barbie and a guy with an aggressive damsel in distress fetish. She's a changeling, which means that she inhabited the body of a dying baby girl at birth. I'd say what a plot twist, but she's literally ginger. Soul swapping is an existential hazard for those. This causes the teachers to turn Sky into a double Asian spy. That's right, fellas, Prince Charming is a snitch. But no worries, because as soon as she finds out, she plants one on him right then and there. How romantic. Maybe rats are her favorite animal. Now, the other world is a pretty dangerous place. The creature that attacked Bloom, which is called the Burned One, has the whole evil squad. These weirdos don't even eat people. A little scratchy scratchy and off they go. No one knows their purpose and no one bothered to research anyway. All we know is they're hounding Bloom specifically. Maybe they blame her for their little nickname. 16 years ago, the headmistresses and their boy toys tried to rid the world of them. So they murdered an entire village in the process. Boo hoo. It's called collateral damage. Get over it. Or at least that's what the OG head mistress Rosalind thinks. Especially that the people killed weren't even human. They were blood witches. Well deserved. We all know magic is only permitted to fairies. Witches can chew on a prick and die. The show soon turns into a Game of Thrones. Rosalind, who got locked up after the whole witch purge debacle, is freed by Bloom. The dum-dum. She then murders Farah and hijacks her job. 
all this unwarranted violence can only mean one thing. The headmistress position must come with a killer rage. The end.